Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and welcome to another substance tutorial. And this time we're going to be texturing a barrel. Now, if you're wondering if you've seen this before or if this looked familiar, that's because I've recently released a video on how to UV map and texture a barrel using Photoshop. But this time we are going to be texturing this barrel in Substance Painter. And the whole purpose of it is that you can understand both ways of creating maps. It's important to already understand how to create a color map, a metallic map, a roughness map, so that when you translate all that information from Substance back into Maya, it all makes sense. So I'm assuming you've watched those, and I've also assumed that you watched my previous Substance tutorials. So please make sure you do, because I'm going to go through this relatively faster. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So here is our barrel which you can download at Academic Phoenix Plus for free. And we're going to export this as an OBJ. So let's go to File, Export Selection. We can go to the options. Um, if I reset my settings, it's going to say Maya Binary, but we're going to look for an OBJ. So go ahead and scroll down until you see that OBJ and then Export Selection. Now I've set my project, so it's going to end it up in Barrel Scenes. So make sure you find it somewhere that you can, you know, place it somewhere you can find it. And you're going to find that I already exported this before. So I'm going to just select barrel underscore obj dot obj and then export and say yes. Okie dokie, here we are in Substance Painter. I'm going to close this. Let's go to File, New. I'm using PBR Metallic Roughness. I'm going to select oh, barrel obj. Ta -da. I'm going to change this to 2048 because higher quality is always better. Click OK. Wait a second. There it is. And here's this one too. Cool. And just like before, let's go to our tab over here. I'm going to scroll down until we see bake mesh maps. I'm going to make turn off ID, go to my ambient occlusion and ignore back face always. Go back up to common and change my map size to 2048. And let's go ahead and bake. It's going to do its magic, normal maps, ambient occlusion, curvature maps. Well, that's interesting. Position, a bunch of other stuff. And once it's done, click OK. Cool. We're set to go. All right, so we need wood. Down here at the bottom left, I'm going to go to All and just type in W-O-O-D for wood. Then we have a couple of different types. I'm going to choose wood chip. Let it do its thing. And you can see what it looks like. So you can, you can see that it's got some really nice details already. It's already kind of dirty for me, so that's kind of nice. Um, it already has a lot of really nice detail automatically. Now, the only issue with this is that everybody who uses Substance will recognize this material, so we can't leave it like this, but at least it gives us a really nice, strong base. We could also use wood chest stylized, which is also very interesting, but you'll notice that the position of the wood grain is going the wrong way, so I need to fix that, but otherwise it looks really nice. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get rid of the other one, and um, I like this one better, so I'm going to choose this one, open up the folder, and then I can mess around with the attributes. So, for example, if I look at the wood fiber here, I might be able to do a rotation and see if that does anything. Now, if it doesn't, I'll just undo, and then try, there's grunge, which I don't think I need, I mean, I do need it. Then I have this thing called sharpen. So same story, I can look at the attributes and see if there's something I can change so that the green goes a different direction. We have fibers again, so we can go ahead and try to rotate it, and there it is. That's the fiber that I was looking for. So I'm going to change it to 180, and you just kind of mess around until you find something that you like. Okay, so far, so good. Okay, now we need is our stripes. Now our, sp our stripes are basically a black texture. So I'm going to grab layer one and just drag it to the top. And what I can do is grab my paintbrush, and you'll notice that I'm using a very soft brush. If I scroll down, I want to make sure that I'm going to turn off my roughness, my metallicness. What I really need is just the color and the height. So right now, my color is white, so if I paint on this, it's going to look white. But what I really want is a really dark black. So then I'll get this effect. And again, I can draw on this as well. Now, another thing we need is our height, right? So we want to go ahead and decrease the height and see what type of effect it has. And you can see that it's starting to almost dig in. I want it to, This is supposed to be the lines of the wood. So I'm going to make sure that it's pretty strong, like a negative one, and you can see the effect there. So that's good. 
Now this is a soft brush isn't really going to help me. So I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to click on this and there's a lot of shapes that we can choose. You are more than welcome to scroll through here and find that magic brush. Um, I'm going to be looking for a square so I can create squares. You. This is really big, so using the brackets on your keyboard, you can just go ahead to make this brush smaller. Still feels kind of large. I just want a strip. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to paint them here because I need a straight line. Now I could try painting through here, but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm just going to hold down. If you click once, hold down shift, you'll notice that I can make a straight line. And if I hold down control shift, you'll snap it to 45 degrees. It basically uh, will snap it to a degree. And what we want is a straight line. So I'm going to click on that and there you go. I'm going to undo that. Make sure I'm at the bottom. Click control shift, drag, bink. There we go. Let's take a look. Where is it? There it is. Nice. Perfect. Hmm. What do you guys think? So it looks a little big. It's a big gap. Okay, let me make it smaller. Again, hit some brackets. My line's getting really small. Again, click, control, shift, click. It's looking kind of nice. It actually looks like a wood plank. All right, so then I'm just going to do a bunch of these. Now, the trick to this is not to keep them even. I'm going to see if I can make it all the way to the bottom. Mm, let me undo that. Okay, there we go. Maybe I'll start from the top, go down. I think it gives me a, a cleaner line. So try not to keep them all at the same shape, same distance. What your goal is to try to, um, you're trying to get lines that are, you know, planks of wood are very different styles, they're different sizes. So again, I'm just clicking control shift and then drag and click. I'm a little worried that some of these need a little bit more reinforcement. So I might actually go back in and define that. Kind of eyeballing it here. Let's see if I can get this one a little cleaner. It's getting better. Okay, moving on. Okay, we'll take the time to just go ahead and finish this up really quickly. So again, my goal is to not make it even. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. And let's not forget, and this is what it looks like right now. And let's not, let's see if I can just paint this in a little bit all the way to the edge. And now I can go in and do the same thing for this one. Whoops. might be some that might need a little love and that's okay we can just go ahead and draw it ourselves that's the nice thing about this maybe i can do a little better job there okay and the bottom we don't have to worry too much about because that one is already no one really sees the bottom of the barrel but okay now, I feel like some of these planks are looking nice, but I really want to change some of the color. So what I'm going to do is create, and these are going to be my plank lines. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to keep that alpha brush and I'm going to turn off the height because I don't really need the height. The only thing or the normal, I just didn't want to kind of change the color for some of this a little bit. So yes, it does have already like a grunge map and everything attached, but the magic about all this is that I can choose uh, I can, you know, change it a little bit different. So I'm going to drag this and pick a color, maybe something around here. All right, grab your brush. And this time I'm going to make my selection a little larger. And 
what I can do is just click again, hold down control shift, drag. So this is a little too much color, but remember that up here at the top right, we have some modes and we can try different modes to see if there's something that will work better. So multiply looks cool. Oops, I think I painted all the way to the top. I might have to erase that. Um, we could also try overlay. Those are the, usually the classics. Um, we can always try things like hard light, you know, there's a bunch of them. And then of course we have opacity, which we can control the opacity. So that what that's going to help is change the plank, the wood plank. So instead of keeping them all in the same color, um, evenly, you can see there's a, gr a gradient. Now I have the ability to change the plank color, um, so that, so that it looks a little bit different. So I'm going in and just kind of grabbing a couple of planks and just kind of changing this color. Nothing major, just a little change. Kind of nice, breaking it up a little bit. If I mess up, the magical tool is Control Z. So again, click, Control Shift. Oops, click, up. There we go. Let's choose another small one here. There we go. Whoops. So it may not look like much, but it's it's kind of helping breaking up the color. Now it's a little strong, so I might have to go in and just kind of desaturate this a little bit more, but it's helping not look so even. So the planks are starting to look a little bit different. Okay, I'm really happy with the results. So let's go ahead and just call this color added wood. Very simple, I'm not that complicated. Um, all right, we have finished the wood for our barrel and the next step is going to be metal. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna cover how to create metal with rust on it for our barrel. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time being with me. I always appreciate your support. If you could just go ahead and subscribe and like my video, that would be amazing. And please share if you feel that this would be helpful for somebody that you know, then please share this with them so that it would be helpful for them as well. Also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download this barrel along with so many other 3D models and ebooks and tutorials. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com, a free resource for you. And again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.